Lisa Mincy is one of the most lovable characters in Genshin Impact. She is one of the very first characters we see in the very beginning of the game, and we begin to see that she is a rather flirtatious woman, with the qualities of a beloved waifu for many. However, what many people don't know about Lisa is that she has a very secretive past that she is not revealing. On top of the surface, Lisa looks and seems to be just a happy librarian doing her job for the Knights of Favonius. But what if I were to tell you she knows more than she's leading on? Today, we investigate Lisa's secret and figure out what's really up with her. But first, before we begin though, if you enjoy Tevot's facts and wisdom, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. After the video is over, join us over in our community Discord server, where we talk all about Genshin, including lore. We're also going to be streaming on YouTube Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5pm PST. But anywho, with that said, let's open the Tevotionary and see what's been uncovered. So Lisa, the beloved librarian of the Knights of Favonius. We first meet her at the same time we meet Jean, not long after Kaya brings us to the Knight's office. She's one of the ones that actually helps us with the Temples of the Four Winds, alongside Kaya and Amber. We also spend time with her during her story quest, titled Sparks Amongst the Books. During that quest, we find out a few books are missing from the library. Most of them are turned in after a little bit of discussion, but there is one book in particular known as the Pale Princess in Six Pigments a book that the Abyss happened to get their hands on. This book apparently contains a lot of secrets. And if you're me, and you've seen my vids covering what's said in this book, then you do as well. Cat with the blue hat also has a fun video on this. I will leave his video down in the description below. But bottom line, this book contains the secret, according to the deceased Abyss Mage. He also mentions that Lisa is not just a librarian, and that in fact is correct. To get into Lisa's backstory, she studied at the Sumeru Academia, doing two years of advanced study. Cyrus of the Sumeru Academia refers to Lisa as the best student the Academia has had in 200 years, meaning that Lisa is a lot more talented and skilled than just a standard librarian. In fact, Albedo also questions this in regards to why she's just a simple librarian. Lisa possesses a great deal of knowledge, and from the looks of things, she has worked a good part of her life to attain all of this knowledge. During her time in Sumeru, she witnessed the toll of what uninhibited erudition can do to someone. She states, It seemed such a high price to pay. How much did one have to sacrifice to attain the profoundest knowledge of all? Before demanding too many miracles from the gods, first consider if you are willing to pay the price they ask. Lisa acquired a miracle of the gods, thus being her vision. The way she describes visions is very intriguing. Understanding the elements is essential to the study of magic, and practical experience is better than anything taught in the book. So, with the literal thought in her mind of having a vision, it suddenly popped up right in front of her. Lisa had attained the knowledge she desired, but she sensed the deep secrets lying in the shadows of that knowledge. For whatever reason, the gods gave humans the key to changing everything, but they did not explain the cost involved. Lisa grew fearful of the truth. From how I speculate visions, they seem like Celestia's surveillance, but we don't know for sure if that's the case yet. Lisa questions the truth about visions, and perhaps one day someone will come along who can figure out the secret behind them. So to sum it up, Lisa went on a quest to attain knowledge, and she in fact got what she wanted through obtaining her vision, and also has witnessed what gaining too much knowledge can do to a person. It's funny because she herself sounds like she has experienced what can happen to a person not only through her vision, but also a supposed curse that has been laid upon her. In an interview, Mahoyo gave us some information about Lisa's backstory. For example, the caster Lisa. She touched a magic book when she was young that gave her most of her powers, but it cut her life by half so she only has a few years left to live. Now, the validity of this is questioned, and people have been asking whether or not this is canon. This interview was done when Genshin was still in beta, so who knows if this is still true or not. 
I will say though, it is interesting in the way Mona describes Lisa. A Tempest Fujit. The constellation derives its name from the hourglass and stands for knowledge and time, or rather the trade-off between them. As each grain of sand falls down, a moment of time, of life even, dies for good. To stop this unrelenting flow of sand, one would have to return the hourglass on its side. But once the sand comes to rest, it remains motionless forever. Hmm. Maybe becomes lazy is more accurate than comes to rest in this case. If Lisa did happen to touch a magical book and did get her life cut in half, then her constellation makes sense, deriving its name from an hourglass. That could explain why it seems like she wants to live the remainder of her life without really having a care in the world. People often describe her as lazy, and she is also known for taking a lot of naps. These naps could have to do with her having low energy, and her stating that if she had full power. This curse could be a drain on her as she slowly withers away, and thus is getting weaker. But as I said earlier, who knows if that curse still stands due to the validity of the Mahoyo interview. I will say though, even if that interview isn't true, Lisa still has a curse in her eyes, being her vision. She questions the divine in which, why would they bestow visions in the first place? But due to her seeing the repercussions of attaining too much knowledge and her vision, she becomes fearful of learning the truth. Due to this, she has become less worried of getting all the knowledge she can to just have a simple lazy lifestyle which drives her to avoid any troublesome issues at all costs. Her constellation revolving around an hourglass could just symbolize all the time she has put into learning all of this wisdom, and that time is the greatest of killers when it comes to this. When too much time is put in, that could be the uninhibited erudition Lisa speaks of, where one's sole purpose in life is to learn everything. The obsession of it is in fact a curse in its own right. Lastly, something interesting I want to point out is that Lisa is not part of the Hexen Circle that Mona is. Lisa is known as the Witch of the Purple Rose, and you would think, due to that label, she would be interested in Ermensol expeditions and tea parties. This isn't the case though. In fact, Lisa states herself that this actually makes her feel cold. The idea of it does not sit well with her at all. This again goes back to the aspect of learning the truth and the consequences that come with it. After all, Mona has a vision as well, and she and her master are masters in hydromancy. Before demanding too many miracles from the gods, first consider if you are willing to pay the price they ask. Well, that concludes my discussion as to what Lisa's secret could be. I have a feeling that during Sumeru, we are going to learn a lot about Lisa's secretive past and we finally will learn what uninhibited erudition is. The way Sumeru is described in the Teyvat chapter trailers is this. The god of wisdom's enemy is wisdom itself, and the oasis of knowledge is a mirage in the desert of ignorance. In the city of scholars, there is a push for folly, yet the god of wisdom makes no argument against it. We will learn all about this wisdom soon enough, but until then, I'm going to go ahead and close the Tevachnery. Thanks so much for watching. And with that said, I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.